Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the principles of perspective projection. So in this video we're going to apply some of the principles that we've already learned and we're going to learn how to draw a curved cylindrical prism. So if we look at the setup that we have here, here we have our two dimensional setup. So we have the plan view of our object, we have our picture plane in front of the object, we have our ground line, our horizon line, and we have our spectator located like so. And over here we have the 3D version of exactly the same thing. Um, so from our previous videos we'll see that when we look at our object um, there's a couple of there's really kind of a, a certain kind of procedure that we need to do first of all um, first thing we generally try and do is solve the vanishing points of our object so we're going to do that by looking parallel to whatever direction we have to move in so if we're moving in this direction go parallel to it up onto the horizon and give us our vanishing point like so in 3d here we have direction 2 giving us VP2 and again our spectator looks parallel to it and gives us our second vanishing point. Um, the next thing we need to worry about is well, where is our starting off point and we can see on this object here none of the edges are on the picture plane so we need to use our datum measuring line in order to find an initial starting off point. Um, so in our 3D drawing here we can see we're putting in a plane, so a like sheet of glass running along this front face of the object. And what that's going to do is that's going to establish a datum measuring line or measuring post on our picture plane that we're able to transfer our true heights back across onto the front face of the piece. So in our plan view, that's simply just taken by extending this line like so. So that's our sheet of glass like that. Um, and there's our, the position of our datum measuring line like that, which we're able to take up into our um, perspective uh, or uh, perspective image so there's the ground so that's our point zero and so any height that we're marking off we mark off from this point upwards so that's our data measuring post and uh, once we have that then we want to see well how do we actually account for the curve of our cylinder we're going to try and draw this front face in first um, in line with our data measuring post so what we do is we need to be able to break up the object into a number of equal parts so you can use your 60 30 set square if you want to uh, if you're used to that method what i've done here is i've just moved out say 10 millimeters 10 millimeters and then whatever is left over for the far corner here like that and um, the reason i've done that is because it makes it a little bit easier to mark off on our uh, plan view we don't have to go redrawing it in and um, with our 60 30 we can just um mark 10 millimeters from our center out um, so the basic approach then, we'll see it in 3D first and then we'll look at it in 2D, is that with each of these divisions, you can just take them across to our measuring post so that we're able to mark it in our, uh, as a true height in our perspective image. So that's going to be the basic idea. Each of the points gets taken across first of all to our measuring post and then once in our per, uh, perspective image, we're going to take it back to where it sh uh, originally started by going to our vanishing points. So you can see then once we have that we're going to go and we're going to just bring them back in this direction here to give it uh, back to our VP2 to get the back surface of the object. So that's the plan really of how we're going to tackle this problem. Um, so on our drawing you can just divide it up there like that. So as I said 10 millimeter spacing and then whatever the last one finishes at. Um, so there's our each of our point there's our front point next point next point and here they are on the front surface of our object and it is actually quite useful if you wanted to to label up um, the points can actually help quite a bit as well um, so we're going to take each of those points and we're going to need to work out where these heights are now you can draw it out on the side if you want but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw it in here in my perspective image on the picture plane using my datum height like that um, as I say you can draw it out to the side if you want but I think it's a bit more useful to draw it in position here so we're going to take our division there it is drawn here in 3d and we're going to just take our circle and just divide it up you so saw 10 mil 10 mil and then whatever was left over and um, so here's each of our points and what I'm doing is I can transfer those across onto my data measuring point so this is the advantage of drawing this in position that I can just go straight across if I drew it out to the side I'd have to draw in my ground line measure that distance with my compass and mark it off here and there's nothing wrong with that but it's just a little bit more accurate just to be able to transfer it straight across um, onto a measuring post so for each of my points here what I have done now is I've taken it marked them off on my measuring post as my true height 
Um, so in our 3D, there's each of our measurements on my measuring post now. So there they are taken across, seen on the measuring post. So what I want to do is I want to take those heights and I want to transfer them across back to their original places. So say for this this height here, it would be give me a point, this point here and this point here. So I have my heights on my measuring post and you have to work off of your measuring post. That's the only one that is true really. Um, so there's our measuring post here. So this is where each of our heights are. And we transfer them back to our vanishing point one. So that's moving from our measuring post back in this direction. So we have to go back to this vanishing point VP1 here. Um, so there's our ground point there, so our zero point, that's our point here running along the ground. So we need to find the position um, of that. So the position is found by um, going from our point down to our spectator and up into our perspective image. So there's our top point here and there's our bottom point. We do the same then for the left and the right hand side. So again, this is where they're located for their height. There's a height going back. And we can see there's our left point taken down, our right point taken down, where it crosses the picture plane, gives us the left and the right hand point. And really all we're doing now is the exact same thing for each of the rest of my points. So my point here, transferred onto the measuring um, line, taken across to my vanishing point, and then I locate my positions down and up. And that gives us one, two, three three, four points, and it'll be the same for these points here. So one from the top, one from the bottom, one on the right hand side, and then I'll have one on the left hand side too. So they go back, again find my positions, take them down, take them up, and you can see we have just a case of join the dots then really at the end. So there's join the dots, and that gives us the front face of the object. So front face of the object, then to draw the back face of the object, because I don't need to draw on the entire object, because some of the uh, circle won't be seen, if I get my ruler and just draw a tangent from that back to there, that's going to mark the limits of what I can see in the object. So I don't need to worry about any ob part of the object that's between that and say our original line here like that. So between here and here, that's all I'm really concerned about. Um, so how we take our points from the front face to the back face, well we're moving in this direction here, so we go parallel here, so this is our vanishing point that we're bringing them all back to. So each of them goes back to my vanishing point th there, VP2, and I find my position then from my back point. So like so, again the next point, drop it down, find my position, take the height, find my position, take my height, find my position. and lastly like so so it's just a case of transferring them back in this direction here and that gives me my back of my object like so so that's the completion then of my perspective image just shaded in here like that um, and we, we can do the same thing over here in our 3d view again we're just seeing each of our points been filled in to give us the front face of the object first of all then project them back to vp2 and locate the back of the object. So that's my perspective image as seen in 3D here like that. So this is a video has been pulling together some of the principles that we've seen already. Our measuring line, we've seen how to get our vanishing points and how to, this time, how to break up a, um, a circle and to locate our various points on it. Um, so hopefully, again, this has been some help to you. So stay tuned to the rest of the videos for more information.